Fairy tales have been a common source of entertainment and edification for children throughout the generations. It's a staple of the childhood experience, and these tales have shaped the way we think about the world and our place in it, as it has done so in the past. Typically, when someone is discussing fairy tales, they are referring to stories that have an association with small, magical creatures called fairies. This is not always the case, but many old folk tales contain some form of another of a fairy. But what is a fairy? What makes these imaginary, mystical creatures so special to countless generations? The earliest records of fairies stretch all the way back to the 16th century, when these small, playful creatures first appeared in nursery rhymes and folk stories of the British Isles. In these tales, fairies were described as magical sprites, small winged beings. They are almost always female and often portrayed as playful and mischievous, as well as possessing some kind of magical powers. Most often, fairies are depicted as creatures of the natural world, with a special affinity for nature and the environment. By the 19th century, the image of fairies have shifted to become more romantic, with the romantic authors of this period envisioning fairies as mischievous, yet gentle and virtuous creatures. These fairies were usually small, although they were able to take on large sizes. In the early 20th century, fairies became more realistic, taking on more human forms. The work of the famous author James Matthew Barry helped move fairies in this direction, with his popular Peter Pan character living in the fairy realm of Neverland. The classical description of a fairy is a tiny winged figure that can fly around and perform good deeds for others. This has evolved over time to include other supernatural beings, such as goblins, elves, and even magical animals that can talk. Today, fairies are often depicted in fantasy stories as creatures of great beauty and power. They are usually depicted as powerful magical beings capable of great feats. They may take on human form, have a wide range of supernatural powers, and may even be immortal. So over the centuries, we have seen the image of fairies become more refined, from the playful sprites in nursery rhymes to the gorgeous, powerful beings that inhabit the fantasy stories of today. As stories continue to evolve over time, so too we will see the evolution of fairies. Whatever fairies may evolve to be in the upcoming generations, they will always be a source for childhood entertainment and edification, taking us on a journey to a mystical place of imagination and enlightenment. Do you consider yourself a fan of fairy tales and all things belonging to that genre? I certainly am, and I have always enjoyed the many folklore tales and various interpretations. Do you have a favourite fairy tale or character? Let me know in the comments. My favourite up to this day is the Disney film Maleficent. It's such a fantastic, well-written story with great characters and actors. So let me talk a little about this painting. I wanted to create a fairy for the final days of February, which usually has the theme of things related to fairies. It's called February. One fairy that stuck in my mind was the blue fairy that's depicted in the story of Pinocchio. Although Disney's version of her is regarded as the embodiment of love and benevolence, 
I wanted to go with a more deceptive and mischievous look, as she was in the original version by the Italian author Carlo Collodi. Considering she is called the Blue Fairy, I wanted to make this image almost all blue with just a hint of the triad colours, red and yellow. I used ink to go over the pencil and then diluted it with water to add the shadows. There was a bit of a challenge as the ink wasn't waterproof and there was a little bleeding in areas, but I was able to correct it as best I could. I wasn't worried if the lines weren't perfect or there was imperfections here and there. I was just chilling out and seeing how using this type of ink would work. It's always good to have a colour wheel on hand just to see what colours work well with others. It's a good investment for any beginning artist. In time you can do your own colour wheels and swatches as experiments and studies. You can see that I have a do-it-yourself watercolour palette made from a business card holder and old makeup pans from my wife's collection. Don't worry, I know what you're thinking. I did ask before I took them. I use magnetic tape so they wouldn't fall out and it also allows me to switch them around if I want to. For the background I decided to try the spattering method with the ink and toothbrush. I didn't want to go too wild with it so I diluted the ink right down. I enjoyed the randomness of this technique and we'll look at other methods in the future. Well folks we've come to the end and I hope you found this video enjoyable. If you feel like supporting me you know what buttons to hit. If you want leave a comment and say good day. I'll see you in the next video. Until then be kind, keep practicing and enjoy being creative.